Change correspondent Hannah Thomas-Peter has been at the University of Reading's Atmospheric Observatory with scientists there. The scientists here make the same uh, measurements, take the same observations down at the same time every day at 10 a.m. and have done since 1908. So if anybody can track the changes happening to our warming world, it's the scientists here. Temperature just heading above 28 degrees. But for more on that, I'm now joined by Chloe Brimicum, PhD student who studies heat waves and specialises in their impacts particularly. Chloe, let's just start with the basics, shall we? What is happening with this heat wave? Why is it occurring? So this heat wave is more likely to have occurred because of climate change. This specific one is because we have high pressure settled over the UK and we've had very dry conditions over winter, effectively causing heat to build up a bit like in your oven. So we've created, there's, there's an oven effect happening over the UK right now. Yes, and this means that we are likely to break that record-breaking temperature of 38.7 that we saw in 2019 and maybe even reach 41 degrees Celsius, which is just very bad for all of the impacts that we're going to see over the next two days. How is climate change specifically driving extreme heat? Because we talk all the time about limiting warming to 1.5 degrees, but we're well over 1.5 degrees of you know, heat wave here. So, so what's happening? So because heat waves are an extreme in temperature, what happens is you see a rise greater than sort of the mean temperature because they're the extreme. So you see a rise in intensity, also how often they occur and how prolonged they are. By um, 2050 in the UK, we could see 35 degrees Celsius regularly in the summer, and that equates to about 5,000 to 7,000 people dying from heat in the UK every year if we don't adapt. And that's with current emission cut targets. So that, just to clarify, that's even if we do what we say we're going to do in tackling climate change, there will be dramatic and profound impacts in the coming years. Yes, um, and that's here in the UK and also globally, which is why we now need um, urgent climate adaptation and action on climate change, as well as the mitigation to reduce these impacts. So how can we adapt? So a great way to adapt is to increase urban greening so that improves um, the temperature in our urban areas but it's also good for other extremes like flooding because it captures rainfall, good for wildlife, good for capturing air pollution um, and also we need heat pump technology which is more um, carbon efficient than our current air conditioning and there should be legislation on this and also legislation to improve working hours so people don't have to work in the heat of the day and these are all things that scientists have been saying for many years so hopefully we'll see action on that um, in very soon. And finally Chloe, lots of meteorologists and scientists have been saying that they feel actually very shocked that we've suddenly come to the moment where there could be 40, 41 degrees of heat in this country. How do you feel about it? Well, unfortunately, I said that we'd see 40 degrees Celsius in the next 10 years in the UK last year, and I didn't think it would happen this year. And I'm very alarmed because I know the impacts that heat can have. Um, so it just shows that we definitely need urgent mitigation so that it doesn't get any worse. Thank you very much, Chloe Brimicum there. Chloe, capturing uh, the complexity of the problem uh, facing governments and policymakers, that there's a huge amount of work to be done limiting global warming, so limiting carbon emissions, but at the same time, the problem is here, the problem is now, it is impacting us. And so there's also a lot of work to be done adapting to those changes that are already here.